The difference here, even if I put two-point perspective, the difference it's cropping this area into a vertical image. So it's not really a vertical image, you have less pixels. Hey, what's up guys, Nuno here. Today I'll show you everything about the new camera tool in D5 Render. This camera tool, it's really interesting because one of the things is that it allows you to take vertical renders instead of just cropping a 16 by 9 area of an image. But also you can use this camera tool to set up multiple cameras for your renders and then render everything all at once. So without further ado, let's get started. Here I have a D5 render scene. This one uh, comes with D5 render already, so you can install it from the welcome screen. And so we're going to be using this scene to make this camera tutorial. So before, to set cameras, you would move around like, like this, as in a fly mode. Or you could simply go to orbit and you can rotate like you would in uh, 3ds Max or any 3D modeling ap application. And while doing this, you can set the camera. So this is great to set the camera, but if you are familiar with other software, it's also great to have a camera tool with a gizmo where you can really define the position of the camera and have extra parameters. So you, you can have multiple cameras spread throughout the scene. So let's go here to the top and select camera. And now click here, camera. So this camera gizmo will show up and let's place first the camera here. And on the bottom, you see that it shows up this preview. Okay, so you can pin this here. So it will always be here, even when you don't click the camera. So if you click away, it will still be here. But if you don't pin it, when you click away, it disappears. So that's the function of that pinning the camera. So I'm going to click again here. And now you see that I can move it up. I can rotate. I can move it horizontally. So I can really define exactly where I want my camera to be. So I can rotate it. Okay. So let's say I want the camera position to be in this position here. I'm actually going to just rotate like this and then like this. So let's say I want this position. Here on the right side, you have more options. These options are similar to what you have already in the other camera parameters here on top or in the effects. You also find them in the effects. And so you can go here to exposure and first I will disable auto exposure. And now here I can, as you can see, manually set the exposure. So I think something like this will be a good volume. And then we have spec ratio. So right now it's 16 by 9, but we have different aspect ratios. So before all this social media with Instagram and all the smartphones was mostly 16 by 9, but now we really need to publish the images in different formats. And when we are using the phone, we need to do it vertically. So we can change here to, for example, 4x3. It's the typical that comes out of any camera. Okay, by default, it's usually the 4x3. Then we have 3x2, 1x1, one one, a square ratio. This was before, uh, and I think it still is on Instagram. You can use the for the, the, the tiles of the Instagram, this 1x1. One one. And then we have the vertical ones. So 9x16, it's the one for Instagram stories, for example. And we have this one 3x4 instead of 4x3, 3x2. So these are the ones that you can select, the vertical ones. So in this case, maybe I'll select the 9 by 16. So it will be for Instagram story. And here it's uh, 1080 by 1920. So it's the correct size for Instagram story, but you can still define here the size. And by the way, if you don't find here the spec ratio that you like, you can still go here and let's say with this icon here unlocked, if I set 500, so you see that it's gonna be really, really tall now the image. Or if I set this, let's say 1,500, so it will be more to a square proportion. So you can still define here the size that you want. And if you want to make the size proportionally, you can click this icon. And now if I set here, for example, 2,000, 
you see that it adjusted here as well on the height. Okay, so I'm gonna set this back to 1920. Then we have the FOV, and we have also the focal length. I prefer to use the focal length instead of the FOV. So I'm gonna use here focal length. I'm gonna set, for example, 24 millimeters. And then we have camera clipping plane here already, which basically it will cut. Let's say that I had here a wall in front of me and I don't want this wall in front of me. So I can just push this and it will cut that area, okay? Today, we are looking at the Ugreen Nexo 300W Wall USB-C Charger, a powerful charging solution for all your devices. Ugreen was kind enough to send me one to try it out, and this charger stands out with its 300 watts of supercharging power, capable of fast charging up to three laptops simultaneously. Despite its faster charging speeds and capabilities, it's quite small, reducing the clutter of multiple chargers and waste. GAN and SIG chips ensure efficient and cool operation. With a single port 140W charger, it's perfect for high power devices. It's a versatile charger with 5 fast charging ports. With the PD 3.1 charging protocol, in 30 minutes it can charge more than 50% of a MacBook Pro. I'm using it to charge both my smartphone and iPad Pro simultaneously, and I still have 3 ports if I need to charge my headphones for example, or even a MacBook Pro. And what's cool about it, it's that it doesn't heat up, and it's heavy enough to stay put on your desk. It also has a system that keeps connected devices protected from overheating, overcharging and excessive current. And it has a solid PVC shell that's fire resistant and flame retardant. A simple yet elegant design, the Ugreen Nexo 300W is a charging station for all your tech needs, and it can complement any work or home space. You can check out the Ugreen Nexo 300W charger in the description below. Actually, I'm just going to quickly add here a cube so you can visualize better what I'm talking about. So let's make it here. Okay. So now if I push this camera clipping plane, you see that it's starting to cut that area. Of course, you need to pay attention because it will also cut some areas that you don't want. But the purpose of this clipping plane is to do this. So we can remove this now. And there's also one important thing that I forgot to mention is the projection mode. Here we have perspective and perspective works great if you are taking aerial shots, okay, views from the top, or if you are looking down into a building, looking up, perspective is great, but to give that, that, to give that sense of scale, but usually, especially in architectural photography, we keep all the vertical lines straight. And to do this, we go here to projection mode and add two point perspective. So now you see that all the vertical lines are straight. So we probably need to adjust these areas here a little bit better. Another thing that you can do, if you see that this rotation is not working so well, what you can do is click this icon. And now with the mouse, you can simply set how you like let's say it's like this okay and now when you're done if you want to exit you can go to this icon here that says activate you click it okay and you are out of that view if you want to go back again to set up the view you can always go back here and do it like this so okay so i want this view and actually i'm going to use this view to show you now other things here you can use that depth of field as well so let's say that I'll focus here on this wall on the bottom and I'm just going to increase the blur. And so if I decrease here the focus distance, so you can really see what it's doing here. So it's just focusing on this area. If I focus here, now this area will be out of focus. If I adjust here the, if I click here and then I adjust here the levels. So this area now is on focus. And you can have multiple cameras, as I said, with this tool. And with this camera, you don't need to actually save it here. You can do that, you can save this camera and you can see here, but this camera will store these settings here that you save to always keep them here. And you can always go here to camera and let's add a new one. Now let's see that I want to take a shot. Let's say something like this. Maybe I want a closed shot on this one. I'll just go here and make 85 millimeters. So let's 
say I want a shot of these stairs. I want with um, take out this depth of field. I want to disable the exposure. And then I'll just depth of field, follow here, and increase. Okay, the more cinematic shot, two point perspective. Okay, something like this. So if I go out, now you see that it kept, kept this camera and the settings. If I go to the other one, it has different settings, okay? So it will always store the settings for, the, for each camera. And why is it better to do with this camera tool instead of the normal, uh, without any camera tool? For example, if I just go here and I try to define, let's say, a vertical shot. So before I will do like this, I can go here to render and I can say, okay, I want 1080 by 1020, okay? Do you see the, the difference? The difference here, even if I put two point perspective, the difference is that it's basically cropping the image. It's cropping 16 by nine. Actually, it's not 16 by nine. I think it's like 16 by 10 here. It's cropping this area into a vertical image, okay? So it's not really a vertical image. You have less pixels, okay? It's kind of like a zoomed version of it. And this is not what you want. So to, to really see the difference, I'm just going to start this image here. Let's go back to this one. Look at the difference. Here, I actually had 28. I'm just going to set 24, but still, if I put in the same position, just update, so we have exactly the same thing. So you see the big difference. I have a lot of room here. I can see the garage. I can see all of this terrain, a lot of room on the bottom and a lot of sky. The other one, you see, I just see a little bit of the sky. I don't see any of the garage. I just see half the building. So it's a big difference to make vertical renders with a camera tool. It's much better, it will work much better. And if you want to do uh, animations with this, it's quite easy. You just select the camera. So let's say I select this one. I go to video and I have here a clip, right? If I want to have multiple clips, I'll create here new clips. Okay, just click this plus button. And then I just click here, add current view. Now I simply, with my arrow keys, I can move my camera like this, just a little bit. And then on this icon here, just gonna press it and that's it. You can define here how many seconds you want this, let's say six seconds and just play. So see, it's really, really easy to make this vertical animation with this camera tool. And that's it for today. I hope you liked this video and don't forget to let me know in the comments if you are using this new camera tool. And I'll see you in the next one.